Right. Let me um see his lawyer. His lawyer right What here. prosecutors were arguing is, is not Trump? only does your client pose a flight risk because obviously he, he's incredibly be. wealthy, has access to planes and a, right. and a yeah, lot of staff, even though you said he turned he over his passport to you months ago. They were also worried about him being able to interfere with witnesses and calling them. And so I guess the question is, how do you assure the court that that won't happen if, if prosecutors are saying this is someone who's attempted to bribe security staff and has already threatened and interfered with witnesses? So I think that the most important thing, um, even more important than the passport, is that Mr. Combs came to New York on September 5th. Soon as we realized that this indictment was going to be coming down in a matter of weeks, maybe months, but sometime soon, um, Mr. Combs got on a plane, left his home in Florida, flew to New York. I called the prosecutors myself. I said, Mr. Combs is in New York. Do you want to know where he is? If you want to know where he is, I'll tell you where he is. But he wants to surrender. He's here to surrender. They didn't want him to surrender because if he surrenders, they don't get to tell the judge that he's a flight risk and he's a danger. Because who, as a danger and a flight risk, would fly no. to New York and surrender? They want so to they, keep they didn't want him to surrender. So since September 5th, you had known you expected it was likely he was going to formally face charges. So I really knew he was formally going to face charges on, on March 25th, uh, the day of the searches, when when uh, Homeland Security searched his Los Angeles home, his Miami home, and his airplane. Uh, I knew that day by looking at the search warrants. I mean, this is I've been doing this for a while. This is not my first or hundredth rodeo, um, that this was going to come as a matter of time. What I realized in early September is that it was coming soon. And so it was time for Mr. Combs to come to New York, which he did. Um, and let me just point out one, one very important thing. The, the prosecutors are seizing on something that happened eight years ago. You know, this video that we've all seen, and it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a bad video for Mr. Combs, and he said so himself when, when he gave his apology. This is eight years ago, and, and the prosecutors are talking about him bribing a hotel security worker. There was no criminal investigation. This was just a matter of, of personal embarrassment because he and the person in the video were in the midst of a 10-year relationship um, that was difficult at times, that was toxic at times, but it was mutually so. And this whole notion that Mr. Combs is forcing drugs on someone is just nonsensical, and it's going to prove to not be true. Well, on that video, he initially denied the allegations when his then-girlfriend, who was in that video, filed a lawsuit last fall and we have that video, uh, I should note, CNN was the, the first outlet to exclusively report on it. He denied that that happened when she filed it in a complaint. And then when the video came out is when he apologized for it. So I, I wasn't his lawyer back then. So I don't, and, and I don't think he denied. I mean, I, I think the lawyers were the ones mostly making the denials. Um, I think they were denying sex crimes. I mean, because at the end of the day, the gravamen of that civil complaint wasn't uh, a misdemeanor assault, which is what you see on that video. Not minimizing it, but it's a misdemeanor assault. Um, wow. It's not a felony? The gravamen of the complaint was was sex crimes, and he denied that, and he still does. Really? Well, and you're saying that this is all just about that one relationship, but but when you you're read lying. through the indictment, they say that there's not just one victim. They say there's multiple exactly. victims here today, and what I heard described was they said they have 50 witnesses or victims. Yeah, I, I think it's 49 witnesses and one victim. I think I think if you broke it down and I say that because count two, which is the sex trafficking count, has victim number one and there is no victim number two anywhere in the indictment. So you're saying that there no. are not other women because what they were essentially arguing here is that he coerced and forced women into sex acts by using physical force, financial pressure, emotional abuse and narcotics for what they described as these freak off sessions. They saying that he self-described them as that. Yeah, there's, there's, there's one victim in the, in the indictment. That's that the charging the document victim does count. Right? No, 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 of course. But I'm just not it's not 50. I mean, what, what they did is a little too cute is it's 50 witnesses or victims. Well, it's it's one victim. That's all that's in the indictment. Our reporter who was in the, the courtroom today said that he appeared to, to have a stunned expression on his face. Was he surprised that he was arrested last night? No, he definitely was not. I mean, I, I, I told him myself in early September you are going to be arrested soon and you're going to be charged with racketeering and you're going to be charged with sex trafficking. So come to New York. Um, it wasn't a, a long conversation. He agreed. So we, we knew this was coming. And in fact, we offered that he would turn himself in. So if there are these these witnesses and victims, and as you're saying that you believe it's one one victim and 49 witnesses who, who saw this behavior, uh, that's pretty powerful, though, to, to have that many people who have 
if they go to court and argue that they that they witnessed this behavior by your client? Well, no. what's your defense about against so, that? Kind of so, so my my defense is is very well established. I I interviewed myself the different men who you know were were being brought sort of into Mr. Combs and this person's you know intimate situation. Um, I've flown around the country. I've interviewed a large number of them. There's not the slightest inkling, according to the interviews that I've done, of anything that's coercive, non-consensual. Uh, nobody was too drunk. Nobody was too high. This guy's These were scum. adults in a relation. This is a ten-year relationship. We can't forget that. This is a ten-year relationship, and it was adults and consensual. And everybody who was there wanted to be there. So I feel very confident in our position. You said you interviewed the the men, but what about the women? I, I haven't interviewed the woman. The, the woman's not available to me. She's a, presumably a, a grand jury witness, and we would not, we we, we, we cannot um, try to interview a grand jury witness. And you don't think that there are any other women who are going to say that that they were coerced into this, given drugs, and essentially as prosecutors were saying that that's what kept them compliant. So there are a lot sessions. of women in these civil cases. There's been a there's been a, a mountain of civil cases ever since the civil case that was filed in November. Um, I don't see them as victims in the indictment. That's my point. And, and so when you talk about that that video uh, of Cassie Ventura, that was his then girlfriend in the video. I mean, just when you saw that, you said it's a bad video. It's pretty difficult to watch. It is. No question. So let me, but let me tell you what Will happened. Will that be used as evidence in court, do you think? A hundred percent. You can uh, see 100%. what happened. So what I said in court today, and I'll, I'll say it again here, is um, the two of them were in a hotel. It was just the two of them in a hotel room. Um, she found out that he was seeing someone else. She was going through his phone. She hit him in the head with his, with his own phone. And then she walks into the, into the hallway with two bags. One of the bags has all of his clothes taking from him, which is why he runs out in a towel. So this isn't her fleeing from one of these freak offs. Why would she take his clothing? That's not what it is. And, and when the evidence comes out, this is going to be completely different than the government's portrayed it. But on this Ooh. video, and I just want to show that uh, again what now, happened? how do you defend against allegations that he hit, kicked and dragged women when he's on video hitting, kicking, and dragging a woman. Sure, it's not, he's not charged with hitting, kicking, and dragging a woman. He's charged with sex trafficking, and he didn't traffic anybody. But he's charged with a conspiracy here where he was using physical abuse, emotional abuse, financial pressure, as prosecutors allege, to keep these women in his fold. Maybe, the, maybe just Cassie Ventura, but keeping these women in the fold. Cassie Ventura lived by herself. She had her own house. She had a family. She had a career. And he was seeing another woman at the time. He wasn't around a lot. She could have done whatever she wanted to do. All of these allegations of, oh, oh I, I was forced, I was coerced, I had to stay, are nonsense. And it's going to be proven to be so. Whoa. That video, in the indictment, it alleges that your client paid hotel staff $50,000 to make it disappear from the hotel surveillance system. Did he pay off the hotel staff? N not that I know of. I know that's an allegation. I, I don't know that that, that, that is true. Um, what I was concerned about when I heard about this allegation is whether there was an allegation that there was some sort of law enforcement investigation pending, because then that would be a crime. But there was none. And so this is not a crime. You talked about, you said you're portraying this as adults who, who were at these events that wanted to be, I shouldn't even call them events. That's not certainly how it's anyone else would, would label it but that they wanted to be there. But mm -hmm. they also alleged that they were recorded mm -hmm. and essentially used as blackmail. Is that not true? That's not true. That's not true. How can you prove that when they it, have electronic evidence that, as they argue, over 90 cell phones, laptops, iCloud storage accounts, 30 electronic and storage devices, hard drives, thumb drives, yeah. you're not worried about that? No, nope. because if they had it, they would have put it in the indictment. That's not in the indictment. Mm. When it comes to wow. your clients, Credibility. I think you people will him again. at what he said last fall. And it's not just his attorneys. I mean, he pays those attorneys. They're speaking on his behalf. They're the ones calling her her claims baseless and ridiculous. And when you read the indictment today, they line up with what she alleged in that lawsuit last fall. If, if the claim is that um, he had unwanted sex with her, that claim is baseless. And, and, and it will be proven to be baseless when we have a trial. But the claim is obviously 
the conspiracy, the racketeering, it's much larger than than just that, obviously, as you know. It, 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 it is, but but it, the government wants it to be. But 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 count two, which is the sex trafficking count, relates to one person, and and one person alone. All of this talk of dozens of victims and fifty witnesses. If if they had that, if they really had it, it would be in the indictment. Wow, I like it. Hey, listen, listen. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining. He's still lying. It's me. Damn. What it don't matter if he's lying. It doesn't matter if he's lying. He, he, he's what you can lying. prove. Attorney. Yeah, he's a defense attorney, man. I've, and I've been on trial before, and I had a juice crew lawyer, man. Um, John's Whirling, man. Um, very good lawyer out of um, Northern Virginia, man. He um, he represented um, Muhammad, John Muhammad, before John Muhammad um, decided to defend himself. You know, the, uh, the, the, the D.C. sniper. Um, listen, Juice Crew lawyers, I, I've been around them. I've, I've seen them at They're work. They're gods at this oh. shit. Yeah, the, well, the, I, well, the idea I would, is he would well, not, would just, hold, on, hold on, he would not be doing this interview if he was worried. Let's just say that. He would not be, be I mean, it's, it's too risky. You know what I'm saying? It's too risky to do an interview like this with CNN about the facts of the case. I, I kind of see that. What, what happened to the thing? Say sniper. <laughs> but I, I don't think he's helping. I don't think this is helping his case. Um, I think I think that this right here. I think he he knows that it doesn't matter. I think his lawyer thinks that the, the case is weak. I think he think I think they think. This case is weak as hell, and um, they 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 don't have they gonna have no problem beating it. If 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 he thought this case was strong, he would not be doing an interview with CNN right now. Because yeah, that's I mean that's that's probable. Like, that's highly likely. But he's still well, lying about the uh, misdemeanor. Like, that seems pretty. Oh yeah, I mean, well, he's a defense attorney. He he he's. He would represent, you know, if, if somebody would have shot 100 people in Times Square and they called his law office and was like, hey, man, uh, can you defend me? He would show up in court and defend that person. He's a defense attorney. Right, but I don't think it's a misdemeanor. I think it's clearly a felonious. But that's not the point that Ike is making, though. <laughs> yeah, he, he's a defense attorney. He defends, he defends bad people all the time. Terrible. People. I mean, I just on principle, I don't see going on the news on fucking CNN. I just don't think it's like if my lawyer did that, even if it was a, a week. Case, right. I That's what I and that sure. tells you that that lets you know that that he thinks this case is very weak or, or in the opposite. It could be like the opposite. And he's desperate. I mean, look, KB, you know, look, it, at the end of the day, KB, right? Who am I going to trust more, you or this? Juice crew lawyer that for sure is not cheap. Yeah, I'm, I'm not asking that. you to trust me. I'm no, trusting the no, juice you don't crew lawyer. To ask me that because you know that you know I know what you would do. You would like you would let him do him, dude. I would. He's actually on instructions. I can only go what, what did he say, Scotty? If did you he say never happened, it never happens. You, gotta, you, gotta, you, you, you see the difference between these guys and those bow tie. Um, black bow tie lawyers, man. <laughs> These dudes be having their shit so together, like man. he didn't flint, he didn't say um or I mean, you know what I'm saying right, one time. And pack, yo, this this, yeah. this shit is mad, bro. I'm just I'm just kind of speechless right now, man. Shit is, that shit was masterful, man. If I was Diddy yeah. watching this shit, I'm like, damn. Yeah, I, I know I'm getting the fuck up out of this joint. No, no, I think he's still fucked. Did he for sure fucked regardless? But I would trust this juice crew lawyer nonetheless. It's my best shot, dude. But, but you have to admit, he put himself in the. If you're in a fucked up situation with the law, you, he did the best possible thing he could do. Get him a juice crew lawyer. Like that. Yeah. That's the, yeah. the top. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He let's put himself honest. in the best position. Let, let's be honest. Everyone here knows this and, and the bottom of their heart. Even the fisherman would hire a juice crew lawyer if his ass depended on it. Exactly. 
you got to go to court with a juice. That's 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 just how it is, man. You got to. That's man. a fact. My entertainment go here too. Yeah, I mean, they they when you when you're good at something, man. Um, you, racism or race or what you feel about people or all that stuff kind of goes out the window, man. You just got to go with um when you when your when your life is on the let's because we have to still admit like his life is on the line. Like Hell if yeah. if if this goes bad, he he might die in prison. So it's and 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 in no way am I saying that he's one hundred percent out of the woods. All I'm saying is. Before I saw that Juice Crew lawyer answer those, because you know those questions weren't scripted. You know CNN, like when they when they interview like a Democrat politician, <laughs> yeah, they give them they give them the answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this this was you know yeah. I mean, he didn't know she what was he was trying to get him. Asked. Yeah, so it's like um, and he flawlessly and he seemed completely unconcerned about this. And we know that the the feds will try to they, they have a ninety eight percent um uh what is it conviction rate conviction rate yeah but conviction rate we do know, we do know that um they will um you can indict a ham sandwich you know what I'm saying you can indict a ham sandwich so uh we'll <laughs> we'll see man um well I, I mean we'll see. you said it before I I think. What makes them good lawyers is they they are smart anyway. They they're very they're very verbal. Good kind of feed. They're, it's their verbal shrewd. IQ. Yeah, they're very yeah, shrewd. Literally, because they're good liars. You know how the sun they made excellent you know um comedians too. Excellent mm -hmm. comedians and, and excellent quick. um writers and shit like that. But you know, I right, you know how the right. sun man has like a good like mouthpiece. Like he, the sun man will fucking just they're, they're they speak well. You know, like they're able to. You know, captivate an eye. Charisma. Lawyers. It's more about charisma. Listen, but, sons make good lawyers too. Yeah, but but it, it's it's it's, a, it's in a different way. It's in a, it's in a different. You know, it's like it's multiple it's ways. Intelligent, more intelligent. It, it's like sons make good quarterbacks sometimes, but they mm -hmm. they ain't thrown from the pocket. I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> right, you know. Yeah. Like, he taking off. He taking off on you. Yeah, no, yeah. but the Juice Crew just like they're just more intelligent, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. and the fact that they're so good at. Oh, go ahead. I... No, I'm just saying they they know how to play the game. Like I had a lawyer, and he, the case I had when 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 I was when we went to court the first time, after all the status hearings and all that stuff, but we went to court to try the case. I was gonna, I was gonna cop that day, but he had. There was a brand new DA, a young DA, a young white girl, who was fresh out of law school, and he said, um, "We're gonna ask for a continuance today because we got this young DA fresh out of law school, and she's trying to make a name." Because he said he, he's he's been in the court buildings for a hundred dozens of times, right? Hundred hundreds of times. He said she's going to try to make a name for herself, so we're going to ask for a continuance and see if the next time well, there's going to be another DA. Because on on these cases, like it's not the same DA every time. It's not like the movies, you know what I'm saying? It's like when you show up to court, whoever the DA it's is that on duty that day, that's who does the case. So he and then he came at the next time. He did like three months later, and he didn't like the DA that they the the, the 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 assistant district attorney had working cases that day. So he was like, we're gonna ask for a continuous um again. And we got another continuous. And then when we finally got a D <laughs> attorney that he knew that was older, that he had um history with, that he had, you know what I'm saying? Um you know, cause he said you know, sometimes you gotta give you gotta give people like 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 for instance like if they got like a fucking degenerate fucking son man who's like out here They'll they'll throw him to the wolves, but then if they got a kid that you know they feel like because I had convinced my lawyer that I was a great kid and I just been set up. My friend, you know, set me up and blah blah blah. Um, I didn't go. I didn't tell my lawyer the truth. I didn't tell my what lawyer that happened. I told him. To you know, I was getting railroaded. You know what I'm saying? And I was getting and, and this was all, um, and I was being you know 
um, screwed over by, by the guy who had snitched on me. Um, so he felt like, you know, he was, you know, he, he wanted to, you know, help me not get my life thrown away. But anyway, the third time, he finally had a, a, a district attorney there that he knew that he had done many cases with and he had, you know, a good report. Yeah. And we talked with that guy behind the, you know, in the, in the, in the, in the back room before the, before the, um, we went up for the case, before we went in front of the judge and the guy was like, okay, cool. Um, we, we won't ask for, um, X amount of years. We'll drop one charge. Cause when they, I had three counts, but when they dropped one count, it put me on a whole different guidelines. Right. As where I wasn't facing, if with the three counts I'm facing 10 years, once you drop it to one count, now I'm facing a different amount of time. The lawyer was like, cool. The DA was like, cool. Um, everything, he said, cool, cool to everything. My lawyer said, he said, yeah, don't worry. We'll get, when we get in front of the judge, you know what I'm saying? I'll, um, I'll only ask for this much time and blah, blah, blah. And um, everything you want, you know, it's cool. Blah, blah, blah. We get in front of the judge. This motherfucker gets out there and he says, the defendant knowingly and willingly brought drugs into our state. He acted reprehensibly. I mean, he flipped the script on us in front of the judge, right? But, and I was shaking in my boots because the way he was talking about me after meeting with him five minutes earlier and him being like, everything is cool, don't worry about it. And he was talking about me like I was fucking Charles Manson in front of the judge. Oh, Chapel. But what he did was he dropped that one count, which put me in a different guidelines. Even though he talked about me like a dog and, you know what I'm saying, it made it seem like I was the worst person in the world, he still dropped that one count. So now I had, instead of three counts, facing this amount of time with the guidelines, I had two counts and I was facing this amount of time with the guidelines. So... It's all games being played in these court buildings because you're not important. You're just one case. You think you're like, it's the biggest deal in the world for you, but your lawyer has a bunch of cases on his docket. That district attorney shows up that day and he's right. got all these cases on the docket. And then it's fucking 50 courtrooms in that fucking building. I mean, um, in that courthouse that where all this shit is being played out all day long. And it's like you're just the one case in um, a big, you know, you're one case in one day on one docket in one courtroom in one city in, in one state. And this shit is going on a million times all over the fucking country that day. Uh, but it's games being played. And, there's, and and the Jews know how to play those games. Man. You know, I was going to say, I could be wrong. They designed with this, it. Mike. I could be wrong with this. But, you know, I trust a Jewish crew to read case law twice. I don't know if I trust even a like a POC lawyer to do that. Even a glider lawyer, yeah. maybe, you know? Yeah, <laughs> and to work the system too. Like right, relationships, right. man, friendships. Right. Um now I will say this somebody that there, there, there are a lot of good black I had a black lawyer who was a civil rights lawyer and he um he was like a bodyguard for Dr. King back in the day, Gene Robinson. That was that like Eugene Robinson on another case. And he got me off on that case too. So it's like I've had black blacks can be good lawyers, but it's the same thing. Like I said, it's like Tom Tom Brady versus Lamar Jackson. They both get the job done, but Tom mm -hmm. Brady kind of just does it more smoother. And LeBron Jackson will give you a heart attack, you know. So, but he'll still win the game. But it's like, damn, bro. But, what I'm, but I mean, <laughs> I mean, even like what Tiger or Juice Crew? Come on now, come on now. Juice I, I don't see a lot of Tiger lawyers. That's the thing. Like all the times I've been to court, I've mostly seen. Um, uh, you, you know who else is good lawyers? Italians, because Italians are very good talkers too. They very good lawyers. Italians, man. Um, Your boy Fortunato Perry out of Philly. Yeah, he's a monster. Mm. Mm. Wow. Yeah, it's all about the, you know being able to talk. You know, so you yeah. there's not a lot of good German lawyers. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but yeah, um, 
let's let's see what I I I think I think I, I feel better about Diddy. I feel a lot better about his, his chances to get out of this. Not that I was rooting for him or anything, but I think he's in good hands. I'll yeah. be cooking for what he did to uh, Biggie and Tupac. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I thought it was completely over, but now I don't know, man. 